The mountainous islands and dense cities of Japan create a huge transportation challenge for this country, but the way Japan has handled it has catapulted it into one of the world's leading countries when it comes to public transportation. In this episode, we're going to take a look at all the ways we get around here in Japan and talk about which ways have served us the best. Here's how we get around in Japan. Of all the ways there is to get around in Japan, the most famous by far is the public transportation here. It is second to none. Amazing train system, bus system. You can get almost anywhere in this city by foot, train, or bus. It is incredible. It's clean. It's, it's even fun, I would say. Once you've lived here for a while, it's easy to take for granted the fantastic public transportation, or even worse, complain about it. But whenever I travel abroad, I immediately remember why I love Japan's system so much. I rode the Odakyo line for two years while I was going to language school in Shinjuku. In a mere 20 minutes, I was at the world's busiest train station, Shinjuku Station, a station that served an average of 3,590,000 people per day in 2018. With so many people, you'd think it would be a congestion nightmare. But because of good planning and design, people move around to where they need to go with little fuss. Today, I'm meeting up with Ruth after her language school. Comes the girlfriend. So, met up with the girlfriend. Yay! We're gonna go try a new pizza place today. Yay. Very fun. Public transportation is great for anything far away. But if your destination is relatively close, the most practical form of transportation is the bicycle. Like a biker king today. <laughs> Every day. Just getting around, one or two people. Bikes are awesome. So yeah, bikes are super practical in Japan. And if you forgot how to ride them, well, you learn real quick. What are we up to today? What are you up to today? So today I'm gonna try a facial. Hello. You just got? <laughs> <laughs> Graceful room, Aine. This is the recommendation wall. Hi, recommend, recommended. This one, very recommended. Uh, <laughs> As a mother of four, a full-time Japanese student, and a busy worker for our pause team, Ruth certainly has earned the right to be pampered. When our kids were small, these kinds of things were nearly impossible. But now that the kids are bigger, I'm glad to see she can enjoy them. Mm. Yoshiko is a good friend of ours, and she does a great job. We enjoy promoting the people and local businesses around us. 2020 has hit many small businesses especially hard, so make sure to support those local businesses around you. Ruth's going to continue her treatment there while I have to go and pick up Joshua. But boy, that looked good and relaxing. I can't wait to hear from Ruth what she has to say about that. What's so awesome about Japan is we can get to all these things so fast. You just hop on a bike, you just walk to it. All these things are so close to us. Walking is by far what you do the most in Japan. When we moved here in 2014, we have no bikes, no car, so we walked a lot. Darren. <laughs> Hi, Sierra. Can you wave? Okay, should we go? Let's, Let's go, keep going. Let's, Let's keep, keep going. going. Time to go, right? Time to go. If we wanted to buy anything, we had to walk to the store and get it. With kids in tow, there was nothing easy about it. And when the rainy season came, we needed another option. And that's when we got our car. No, not that one. This one. After six months of lugging our kids around by foot, we found a used 2004 Toyota Noah that worked perfect for us and bought it. Vehicles in Japan are smaller than their counterparts in America, but this van had just enough space for our family and luggage. 
In Japan, you need to pay for nearly all parking and a majority of the highways that you drive on. That being said, the cost of a long trip on a tollway is about the same that you would pay for one person on a bullet train. So if you have a car full of people, it comes out to be quite a bit cheaper. But be aware, the process for getting your license in Japan is grueling, and many people have to try several times before they pass. And look out for those parking spots that want to overcharge you. So sometimes when you're parking in Japan, things can get a little expensive. Can you help me with parking today? Maybe just a little bit? That's one that's really old that we use just as a joke sometime. I'm gonna put the real one in. Cars are great for trips, but for taking little kids around with you locally, nothing beat the discovery of the Mama Chari. What do you have here? So, this is my Mama Chari. It's very nice because I put Josh from the front and we actually fight over who gets to hold handlebars because he thinks he should drive it. And then Sarah sits back here. To get it started, I have to first unlock it. Unlock, turn on the on button. It's an automatic, automatic. So this bike comes with three speeds. The middle is automatic, so it's just pretty consistent. When I start pedaling, it helps me keep that pace. So if I'm going up a hill, I just pedal normal and it does all the extra work, which is great when I have two kids on it. And then there's also one that uses less battery, but you have to work a little more. And there's one that uses more battery and it's like a little mini scooter. And there's also three settings with the gear. So there's the lower gear, the middle gear, and the higher gear. And to charge the battery, you have to take it off, take it inside, and plug it in. Pretty much, I get on and I go. Hey guys! Hey. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? Are you driving the bike, Joshua? Yeah. We Ringing the bell? Huh? Jingle bells. Oh, jingle bells all the way. For long distance travel in Japan, flying is often the most affordable option. You can reach just about any major city in Japan in less than two hours by plane. In fact, what usually takes longer than your flight is your trip to actually get to the airport. But when you think of Japan, do you think of airplanes? No, you think of Shinkansen or bullet trains. These high-speed trains are the go-to option for long-distance traveling in Japan. Although they are expensive, they are extremely fast, efficient, and comfortable. Enjoy watching the Japanese countryside whiz by as you effortlessly move along an incredible network of high-speed rails, all made possible by ample tunnels and bridges. These trains seamlessly tie into the public transportation network, and there is very little time wasted transferring to and from other forms of transportation. And then there are all kinds of variations, special trains and trams, ropeways and gondolas, and cable cars made specifically for moving people up steep mountain sides. Japan has figured out how to best utilize its resources for moving people around its unique landscape. But in the end, it all comes back to what facilitates the everyday life of the people living here in Japan. You didn't cry? Oh! Wow. You check the mail for mommy? <laughs> So how oh, was the rest of it? What that happened? It was wonderful. So I actually fell asleep because <laughs> I was so relaxed. She put more stuff on and just massaged and massaged. And then I got a back massage, which is just glorious. And I have my next one scheduled already. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show everyone how well you're reading now? Let me hear. It's ramen for dinner, yum! Yum! <laughs> Are you getting something in your mouth, dude? 
Yummy. Do you like ramen? Ramen ga suki kana. Yes. Well, that's a look at how we use Japan's amazing transportation system. How do you use it? Please comment below, like, and subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you on Life in Japan. Bye bye.